How successful was the red October month? What does the SACP's decision to contest the Mitsimaholo by-election alone mean to the Tripartite Alliance? Were the submissions made to the Commission investigating the feasibility of a fee, free higher education a waste of time? And who does the YCL regard as the best presidential candidate to save the ANC and revive the Alliance? What time is it? It's question time. Hoto Ngurula Mraro and welcome to the show. My name is Mpoh Tselu. The Young Communist League of South Africa is set to hold its summit at the weekend. The gathering comes in the wake of a number of developments on the, on the political front. That is, the Zimbabwean political impasse continues to dominate news headlines. But coming back home, the most recent is, of course, President Jacob Zuma's cabinet reshuffle that resulted in the exiting of former higher education minister, Bladen Zimandia, amongst others. Then was the release of the fees commission report a week ago. The YCL have lambasted the report, saying it exonerates the private sector from contributing to free higher education. In a milestone decision, though, the SACP has decided to contest next week's Metsimaul municipality by election in the Free State alone. The ANC Secretary General, Gwede Mantashe, says the party views this decision by the SACP as regrettable. Meanwhile, the YCL is calling for the repackaging and revival of the Freedom Charter. But how can the YCL describe its relations with their counterparts in the ANC, the Youth League, that is? We are live, and therefore you can call us and uh, air your views. The number is today is 089-110-4210. International number plus 2789-110-4210. Uh, Twitter handle at question time 24. My guest today is Mlule Kijelanga. He's the National Secretary uh, for the Young Communist League of South Africa. He joins me in studio. Lou, welcome. Hello, 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 and, brother. Uh, thank you very much. I know you had to be in the Free State, but you made time to come to talk to us. We really appreciate it. Let's talk about uh, this coming weekend summit first. Um, what's, it's, it's, um, I understand it to be, um, what is it, education oriented? Are you only going to focus on issues of education? Now look, uh, this is a very important milestone by the young communists uh, to assemble uh, progressive academics across the country to come and uh, engage on a number of areas that first affect our education system, mm -hmm. including how do we prepare those young <coughs> academics as we are preparing uh, to take over the state power in our country as communists. Yes. But uh, in the main... Uh, this will be a very important uh, event, which will start uh, possibly on a Saturday morning and end on Sunday. Okay. And will be attended by delegates from across all, all universities in the country. Okay. And will be addressed by uh, T.G. Zolim Kiza, Kambesir Ramaphosa, Deputy Minister the President, Kambesir uh, Putimanamela, as well as myself and uh, Kambesir Ben Zimande. Okay. Now... Obviously, it comes in the wake of this fees uh, commission uh, uh, report. And your position, it's like you, you, you're scorning uh, at, at that, that report. Look, Mpo, we said earlier that uh, we were suspicious about the delays on the, on the report first, on the commission's report first. <coughs> Secondly, when it was out, we said that we reject it totally because uh, this report is just... Uh, it's not a progressive report because as long as uh, the rich are not going to pay for the poor for free education, as long as you still say that uh, students might be subjected to paying interest in banks whereby there will be in inflation and market uh, uh, prices, as long as you still say that uh, no, this issue of free education is thrown outside, once the ANC or in 52nd National Conference resolved long time ago that uh, the issue of free education should be implemented. All these delays, we feel that uh, instead uh, the youth in our country is being subjected to uh, commissions after a commission. There was once a Balintuli report which stated clear that uh, this is feasible. Again, now this one is coming up. 
in a way that still uh, keep the status quo, which means uh, these are delays of these commissions. All what you want now is for the ANC to instruct its employees in governance to implement free education as early as the beginning of, of, the, of January 2018 okay. academic year. How do you then, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in that same note, how do you exonerate the general secretary of the Communist Party from that responsibility? Of course, he's no longer the Minister of Higher Education, but he has been throughout. Let's say that uh, we've been raising the issue of free education to him, and he said to us, first and foremost, that uh, there was a commission that uh, they started that he commissioned, that indeed uh, this is feasible and this is the amount that is needed. We feel that uh, he has tried his best uh, to, to deliver. One have looked back on the work they've done on NEFSAS and other areas of the work done in the Tibet colleges. Yes. Uh, uh, so those are the parts of the work that has been done. But however, at the end, whatever has been done, the poor students in our country, the youth in our country, want free education, in particular for the poor, because our country, education is very expensive due to various reasons mm -hmm. uh, on how even approach our thing, the issue of curriculum, how we get some uh, uh, material, others and others from overseas. Yes. We've got also lecturers who can't even produce uh, material in line with our country. Instead, we, we, we buy some books from, from outside mm -hmm. with intellectual properties. We are vast compelled, the student, that also you must have uh, in line, respond in line with that. But then the main challenge, we say that uh, the main challenge facing our country is the commercialization of our education system. Okay. Princess, you are in Joburg. Welcome. Hi, Mpo. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call, Princess. Yes. Mpo, I would like to firstly appreciate the leadership of the Young Communist League, uh, Mluleki, for yes. this opportunity of clarifying the position that the YCL has taken yes. on wanting to bring together progressive academics. Okay. or being an attempt to want to build progressive academics, starting from these young ones that are in institutions of higher learning. Okay. Because we need conscious academics, and the YCL is the only organization so far that has thought of that initiative of bringing these young people together and bringing them to give them the conscience that they need in taking the country forward. And the YCL takes this leadership at a time when there is a whole debate on coloniality and decolonization. And it's important that while we decolonize, we, we, we look at the class content of it, and which is basically how education is being sold. So we thank the YSO leadership for this initiative, and we hope they'll be covered in media because we're going to be watching, we're going to watch their program, we're going to follow, and we're going to see the kind of membership that they have after this progressive and key program that they are putting together. Thanks, Nico. Thanks very much, Princess. There well, Princess, um, uh, in, in alignment, obviously, with the programs of the YCL. We're taking a quick break. 089-110-4210 is the number to dial. Please don't go away. Are you sure about that? Yeah, but make it a castle free. Castle free. Zero percent alcohol. One hundred percent castle. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. Our guest today is Mlu Zelanga. He's the National Secretary of the YCL. And Wiseman, you're in PE. Welcome. 
Uh, good afternoon, Paul, and good afternoon to Luleki. Long time no speak, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me just get my views, my honest views about the uh, FACP. You know, Paul? Yes. Communist leaders of today are a mess. Mm. They wait for them to be reshuffled in order to make noise publicly that Abakuzuli Nabum Abakuzuli. You know, you, you know, I'm listening to you and Mluleki talking about Blaine Zimande that, you know, uh, he, he worked very well uh, on the NAFAS, everything. But, oh, I want, to, I want to tell you something now. You must look at the uh, Blaine Zimande statement from, from the day that he was reshuffled. Blaine Zimande publicly said that people must be in government in order to, to, to know that what's going on in the government. He was against this thing of a free education. Now I'm calling to South Africa to listen to, listen to Blaine Zimande's statement going forward. He's going to champion this thing that he was against of a free education. These people are a mess, boy. You see, that what Blaine Zimande said is just proving what he's been saying about these, these, communi these communist leaders that they are in politics with, for their own stomachs, Mpo. Mm. I'm telling you now, it is on record on SABC that a, a plain demand was saying that uh, people uh, need to be in government so that uh, they can see what is going on. Uh, South Africa uh, will never, uh, 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 what this thing of, of, of a free education. But we'll see now, he's going to champion that thing that uh, the government must give a free education. But when he was there, he said that uh, uh, that thing is impossible. Right. That's what Blaise Zimande was saying. It's not my view. It's, you know, Mluleki, you can check to the records. That's what your leader was saying, that free education is impossible. It's not possible. Now he's going to tell you that you must champion the free education. But when he was the minister of the education, he said, no, people, they don't know. They must be in government in order uh, for, for them to know what's going on. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul. Wise, thanks very much, wise man there in PE. Your response? No, let me appreciate uh, what wise man is raising. I think wise man uh, is uh, also selective on, on, on what he's quoting. Because also, Ben Zimande, both as the General Secretary of SACP and Minister by then, has been on record saying that uh, he supports the call for the free education for the poor in this country. And even when he addressed the uh, and address and met with, uh, with SAS leaders in Cape Town. He was clear on, on that one. However, is that, uh, we are pleased as the wise cell that uh, in the process, uh, Plain Zimande is working in our offices now full time, uh, doing the work of the SACP, and he will continue to champion the struggle for a free education. We're not told by Zimande as the wise cell what must he do or not do. We started long time ago, before even Zimande as the minister, calling for a free qualitative and composite education. Uh, now, we are determined, we are steadfast, we will continue to fight for free education for the poor as young communist league in our country up until uh, that is being implemented. Hence, okay. we call the ANC that they, they must not waste time. They must not play with the feeling of the poor students in our country. They must continue as early as next year to implement free education for the poor in our country. Romano, you are in Eden Park. That's correct. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call, Mpo. You're welcome. Mpo, I think that, uh, as I told you the last time when you had Blade and the Monday on, on your show, yes. that Sobukwe used to say that there are no communists in South Africa because there are quarks. Now, Blade and the Monday, he was the one, he was the chairperson after the 1994 elections of education. And after he's messed up our education, you can see our primary education today is in a hell of a mess because of blatant demand. Then he left, he said he wants to go and build the Communist Party. Then he came back after he was appointed by President Zuma as a minister of higher education. Now our higher education is again in a hell of a mess because of plate in the Monday. And I want to make it clear that the Communist Party, I want to agree with Weissman, that they are there to serve, to serve their own selfish interests. They are not there to serve their national interests. And I don't think that there's a future in this country for the Communist Party because clearly they don't have a 
an agenda and are only there to create a confusion. I thank you. Romano, thank you very much. Well, if there is no future for the Communist Party, um, why then are you, um, uh, and I'm bringing in the mother body here, the, the Communist Party has decided to uh, contest by elections uh, in Metsima Hulu, and I think that's where you were going, uh, or where you're going after this show. Um, how do you explain that? Look, uh, we note and uh, not and, and sometimes not appreciate those who say that uh, there are no more communists in this country, but they don't know which uh, litma test they have used uh, to arrive at that conclusion. Mm. We are determined that there are good communists in our country, including Ben Zimande himself. Mm. And I must say that uh, it's quite an interesting time, and I appreciate the decision taken by the SAC Peace and Committee to contest the real run of the elections in Matsima Holo local municipality. It's not a by elections. That municipality was oh, dissolved yeah, was, when there was no sure. the, when there was no on the coalition that was there. Yeah. We must say that uh, the SACP convened the 14th Congress. Among the resolution that it, it took was that uh, it's going to contest state power actively. That is the beginning of that contestation of state power. And we are looking forward. Uh, people must understand that, that uh, we are not contesting the ANC. We are contesting power with all other organizations, we are contesting there against uh, ANC, we are contesting there against DA, are UTM and EFF. But the people of Matima Hall, it's my first time I'm going there, I was there last, last week on Thursday, I, I've done some round and engaged with young people there. They are all saying that uh, we want the SACP. We placed our hopes to the SACP because SACP is the only hope that can deliver to the needs and the aspirations of the people of Matsima Holo. And we have responded to that call through the Senate Committee by deciding to field the uh, 21 ward candidates from the SACP uh, to contest those elections. Okay. Kabelo, you are in Kwakwa. Hey, how are you? I'm well, thanks for the call. Uh, no, I'm all right. In actual, for the, uh, any week of time, I think I want to align myself with what uh, was an NF site. Yeah. Uh, you know, in South Africa, we don't have the communists. They are pure jokes and aggressive capitalists. So the whole thing that there is a feature of this is, is it's a waste of time. They are ideologically confused. I think that is all that I can say. Thank you. Okay, KB, thank you very much for the call. Let's go to a quick break. When we return, we'll wrap up the show. 89 is the number to dial. Marco! Follow! Follow! Oh, no. <laughs> Two weeks earlier. Gentlemen, welcome to our pub. Castle. Share a castle, make some new friends. We make sure to be where news is happening, both locally and globally. For the latest business news, stay with us. From South Africa to the world, we've got all your latest sporting news. Don't miss our weather updates at every hour. Stay tuned to News Today, Monday to Friday, from 3 to 5.30 p.m. here on ACBC News. Welcome back. Mnule Kilanga is the National Secretary of the YCL and is our guest today. And uh, from Kwakwa, we have uh, Lazarus. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for the call, Lazarus. Thank you for taking my call. Just no a way. quick one. Um, I think we need to understand. I think I also support the notion that free education mm -hmm. for the poor, not for the rich. Yes. Free, free education for the poor must be given. Really. I mean, we have been 
We've been struggling as a gentle pool trying to get bazaaries and all that. That's just one. Number two, education is not a commodity. Education is, is a right. Yeah. I mean, imagine now if, if you get a loan of 100000 to go and study at one of the big, biggest institutions and the, the next thing, you don't find employment. You are left with a bill that you have to pay for the rest of your life. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thanks very much. Well, I guess... Um one of your members there. But I want no, it's to... not true. It's just an ordinary person. We appreciate the work being done by both the, the YSL and, 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 and the communists and our call for free education for the poor. Yeah. Um, the red October month, um, how successful was it? I must say that uh, we are thrilled as young communist league by the work done by both Gauteng province and the most Mapita province, the KZN uh, in the language that is known by everybody for convening such successful uh, and political centenary celebrations of the great October Socialist Revolution. This was a uh, very critical one because we're experiencing the 100 years of the great October Russian Socialist Revolution. And we had successful rallies uh, both in, uh, in, in Gauteng and uh, closing rally in Durban. Yes. But however, what was critical is that we have also main theme was focusing on saying no to gender-based violence. Yeah. Because amongst what the communists care, they care about the women, they care about the youth, because among the things are humans, and we have to protect the, the women and the youth. Because if you have women on your side and are protected in your country, and you've got youth on your side, you can both defend and advance the gains of the revolution. Yes. Now, but uh, uh, if you so much care about women, um, why are you not supporting a woman presidential candidate uh, in the ANC race? Look, uh, any organization from time to time will always sit down and analyze. It's not about the issue of women or you are a man. Just look on a particular candidate that can uh, address the issues that is affecting the revolution on that current period. Currently, the Young Communist League have, uh, ex established the Youth Manifesto yes. with the 10 Youth France. Yes. That uh, we feel that anybody that you can uh, support should uh, make sure that uh, as part of uh, delivering youth development, the youth must, must conform and implement those 10 Youth France. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we say that we look at the state of our revolution, we look at the state of our alliance and the perception about the NC as an organization. We still believe that the communists have no mandate okay. that they must break away from the, from the ANC. And also, we are free to talk about the ANC because all young communist leaders, members, and communists are all members of the ANC and are concerned about the direction that the NDR should take moving forward. Okay. Then, among the young communist league, the general understanding and the view that uh, it's important that uh, instead of managing the succession and preserving the unity within the, the alliance and the ANC, that uh, the deputy president should be the one that take over from, from President Zuma. Okay. And we hope that uh, that on its own will assist. But we say, as the YSL, we are not pinning our hopes, whether on, on Cyril or even on Gosazana, all what you want. One SACP to contested power and ours is a struggle for socialism. But okay. because we are part of the society, we can't be aloof or not dealing with issues that affect our country. Because if the ANC is strong, if the alliance is strong, the people of South Africa will be free okay. and there will be development and everybody will be free to, to engage on issues that affect our country. And the struggle towards socialism will be indeed seen by even those who think that uh, in order to judge communists, you must okay. crucify the, the living and praise the dead. Now, breaking news. President Robert Mugabe has resigned. Since he was president from the 22nd of uh, December 1987 up until today, President Mugabe has resigned. We can um, confirm that. And um, perhaps is it good news? Why is he I think it's a good news to learn that uh, good leaders must know when to leave positions. Uh, we welcome that. We hope that the people of Zimbabwe will begin to unite and shut the way forward for the development of, of their country and make sure that uh, they sustain the gains where Mugabe left and improve 
on the ways how things are done, but we're also calling for communities in Zimbabwe to strengthen up and make sure that we change Zimbabwe okay. to a socialist country. Right. Six o'clock news will give you more on those details, but yes, we can confirm that President Robert Mugabe has resigned. And for me and the entire crew, that was question time for today. I will hold.